I'm Dov, and today I'm back playing Total War Warhammer. We're taking a look at another online battle between myself and a, a Dwarfs player. Um, definitely going to be a good time. So we'll go through the builds while things are in slow motion here. I do have Sartharel the Everwatcher as my lord. He's got the Plague of Rust and Transmutation of Lead, as well as Standard Die. I've also got a, a Chaos Sorcerer Lore of Death for support. He's got uh, just Soul Blight to help tear away extra armor. And so the idea with this, uh, he also has Arcane Conduit and uh, Life Leeching to help regenerate a bit of magic as well. Um, the idea is you use the Soul Blight, you know, to get like an area of effect armor debuff on the dwarves. And then you can use Big Bird to cast either regular Plague of Rust or overcast Plague of Rust on a specific high value target and you can bring their armor down to very low amounts even units like iron breakers or you know hammerers that have just insane armor stats you can really tear away their armor with this synergy um, for, you can see from my infantry line I've got uh, chaos marauders mix of great weapons and regular I've got uh, uh, two forsaken on each flank three chaos chariots which are a very good pick against the dwarves anyone that has chariots should definitely bring them against the dwarves and over here we've got uh, two marauder horsemen with throwing axes you guys know I love my ranged cavalry especially armor piercing ranged cavalry so definitely gonna be a good time for my opponent's force he's actually got uh, for his lord ungrim iron fist so unbreakable it does look like he has uh, just stand your ground and axe of dargo so gonna be getting some extra damage versus large units He's also got a Master Engineer, which is not a very common pick at all, but uh, definitely cool to see. Not something you see very often. Front line is Longbeards with great weapons, with one Iron Breaker here on the right side, uh, backed up by two Slayers on each flank, as well as three Corollers, two Organ Guns, or sorry, one Organ Gun and a Cannon, as well as two Miners with Blasting Charges to bring up the rear. So uh, definitely going to be in for a rough time, seeing as my opponent doesn't have a whole lot of infantry, um, and this army is very, very large that I've brought, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, one, one tip to newer players, if you're going to bring artillery on a map like this, you want to deploy way in the back here, because as you can see, my opponents are, or my forces are approaching on this hill, and the cannons aren't effectively able to fire up and over the slope. So they're not getting hardly any work done. Uh, not that there's a whole lot of good targets here to shoot anyway with this build, but still, uh, you know, any damage they can get done, you would want them to if you bring them, obviously. So definitely recommend if you bring, um, you know, evaluate which map, because not some maps just aren't suitable for black powder weapons at all, or cannons, rather. You can usually make handgunners work on almost any map, um, you know, handgunners and thunderers and so on. As you can see here, the main line fight's going down. We're dropping a Soul Blight here. Or, sorry, Transmutation of Lead. Big Bird's charging through. He's getting in there. Uh, the Chariots are coming around this flank now. And uh, now you can see what I was talking about. My opponent just doesn't have enough infantry to account for everything I've got. So he's going to get outflanked here. Those uh, Marauders take a ton of Blasting Charges. Don't take a whole lot of damage, surprisingly. So they're going to be able to get in there and start working down these corollers and those miners. Uh, you can see now the uh, Soul Blight is going down, and I'm not sure if I casted the Plague of Rust. Oh, yep, on this unit of uh, Longbeards here. So you can see they're down to only 35 armor, or they were for a moment there, while those two are stacked on top. So very strong, um, able to make Chaos Marauders trade effectively against Longbeards, which is not a good situation for the Longbeards. You can see the chariots got into this flank a bit, did quite a bit of damage to these miners, now they're pulling around. Uh, the marauders are getting caught a bit by these miners, but then leading them off um, on a wild goose chase, which is very good for me. Taking a bit of cannon fire, but uh, no big deal. They're fairly cheap, as far as chaos units go at least. Uh, Big Bird's just here in the main fight still. Um, he won't take a whole lot of damage from these dwarf units just because none of them have great attack stats. And his slayers are bogged down, you know, elsewhere, so they're not able to... Uh, yeah, the Slayers here are pretty much dead. They got worked down pretty well by the Forsaken, so great pick for me. You can see some great Chariot Charges coming around, and, um, you know, this battle and the battle I'm going to show you after are good examples of why I don't really play Dwarfs on Ladder, because 
they can win, don't get me wrong, but for me and my play style, uh, the lack of mobility is killer. And, and you know, especially against facing off against the quote-unquote disorder factions like Beastmen, uh, Chaos, Greenskins, you're going to struggle with chariots and large mass units and getting outflanked and all those things. It's just really going to be tough to make your ranged units effective, and the dwarves very much rely on their ranged units to deal with other factions of mobility, seeing as they lack mobility pretty much completely. You can see some blasting charges going off there on those Marauder Horsemen, actually taking quite a bit of damage, so not great. You can see my opponent's forces are very tattered now. These chariots have racked up a respectable number of kills, as well as the uh, Forsaken and Marauders trading above their weight class with the you know spell support. So definitely going to be a sad day for the Dawi. Many grudges will be written. No doubt, and uh, I apologize to any Dawi fanboys. You probably won't see me play dwarves a whole lot on this channel. Uh, occasionally, I might play a two v two or you know a, a ladder battle just for fun. But um, like I said, I'm not a big fan of the dwarves play style. So let's go ahead and take a look at another that I played against the dwarves, so that at least you can see some kind of Dawi action here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, there it is. So I'm going to bri be bringing Azag the Slaughterer with a fun build, um, kind of with the same theme, which is to melt the armor away from the dwarfs in their high value units. Um, and then, you know, just use small pockets of armor piercing troops to help deal damage where possible. Um, in this one, I do have the uh, Hammer of Gork Goblin Rock Lomer, which is a pretty good, pretty good pick against the Dawi, in my opinion. Uh, we've also got a couple squigs, you can see, one orc boar chariot, the Morgub's Mangy Marauders, which are one of my favorite units in the game you guys will come to find. Uh, we've also got the main line is all savage orcs with uh, a couple black, black orcs to back them up, and the Warlord's Boys, of course, for some armor sundering, as well as the Rusty Errors. So the armor sundering, when you sack it on top of Soul Blight, um, just like in the last game, you know, stacking those armor debuffs on top of each other really helps put down the dwarves in a big hurry. Uh, now for my opponent's build, I can only assume that he's relatively new, um, and I don't mean that in a rude way, but this build is... Uh, uh, I'm not sure if he randomly generated it or how this build came about, but uh, he does have three miners with blasting charges, and the Grumbling Guard and the Dragonback Slayers as his only melee infantry. And he's got two rangers with great weapons, one of them being the Ulthrar's Raiders. He's got a unit of Iron Drakes with two Silver Chevrons, a couple artillery pieces, three actually, with one of them being a Goblobber. So um, yeah, he's going to have a hard time protecting all of this uh, up against as much as he has. That being said, my forces are going to take a horrible beating as they march through here. You can see they're getting shot to absolute pieces, especially these savages in the front who have no armor to speak of. You can see gobs being lobbed from the goblobber and uh, doing some nice leadership damage. Probably actually going to route off these savage orcs. So, but uh, now we're starting to bring in the fun times. War pigs coming in here on the flank, smashing up those miners. Going to get into the uh, Bugman's Rangers here a little bit. Another expensive unit that's. Uh, of questionable value, especially because of <laughs> how little melee infantry he has, but uh, you can see these savage orcs are quite savaged, uh, pun intended. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my opponent's forces now, he's uh, sending off his lord to chase off the mangy marauders as well as these grumbling guard. Um, definitely needs to keep them with the rest of his army for support, but I mean at this point it's, uh, you know, his ranged units have been closed with and he's not pulling them away effectively, which is, you know, very hard to do as the dwarves granted, but uh, yeah, the Dawi are going to get beat down pretty here, pretty hard here by the uh, combined force of orcs and goblins, and Azag dropping the debuffs, uh, you can see here the armor is absolutely gone, 10 armor on those Ulfar's raiders, so... They got smashed to bits, and uh, you can see 10 armor on those rangers. You know, just the armor sundering is so strong against the dwarves. The gyro bomber here is an interesting pick as well. Uh, I have had the sky hammer be fairly useful against the greenskins upon occasion, but um, a regular gyro bomber with a silver chevron, um, I'm not sure about that. So we will just watch the beautiful cinematics. 
as we wrap things up here. Dropping a bomb right on Azag's head, but not going to do a whole, whole lot of damage to him. So these, these bombs in this big blob will do a fair amount of damage, but uh, now that Azag's up in the air, he's going to... Skull Muncher, I should say, will uh, take a bite out of that gyrocopter real quick. You can see it's going down very, very fast. So that's going to be it for the Dawi forces, except for these Dragonback Slayers here. So uh, we'll watch them get devoured by squigs and smacked up by savage orcs and all manner of nastiness just rolling in here. But uh, the dwarves, you know, the slayers, they have no fear. They will fight to the end and uh, probably kill a fair few number of these squigs and savages in the process. But Oh, do the dwarves. They're so cool thematically in, like, in the Lord of the Rings and, uh, you know, in the lore of Warhammer and even in campaign. I really like the dwarves. But just in multiplayer, in their lack of mobility and their inability to deal with high mass units and it's just really rough for them. Um, I mean, I, I know that it's possible to win with them on a high level. I mean, I've seen tournament replays with people winning as the dwarves and, you know, other things, but it's just not a play style I have fun with or that I'm very good at I should say um, and I feel like most people will struggle to play with the dwarves which is a little bit counterintuitive because you think they would be kind of a beginner faction and I see a lot of newer players playing as the dwarves but in my opinion you're kind of behind the eight ball um, it's probably better to start with maybe the empire it's tough to say um, but the dwarves require a pretty high level of skill if you want to be good with them and uh, you know be able to stand up to something like this so well played to both my opponents I enjoyed playing them um, hope you guys enjoyed watching if you're liking the content subscribe share with your friends like the video uh, you know we're I'm trying to generate as much engagement as possible to help get more subscribers get more views in here because I would like to be able to you know bring you guys lots of good content and the, I think the game is more fun when more people are good at it so hopefully you guys are learning something from watching these um, yeah see you guys next time